But as soon as I got this truck this week from uh, Stellantis to review, literally everybody drives 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. It does honestly feel um, $83,000 in here. I could spend probably 40 minutes um, just going over all the options on this. <laughs> Man, that sounds good. Hey guys, welcome back. This week I have been testing out this 2024 Ram 1500 Rebel. What a treat this has been. This is pretty much the baby TRX. Um, has the 5.7 liter Hemi, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. It's finished in flame red, has a little bit of a two-tone paint job. It looks very good. This has been an absolute treat this week. It looks the business. Believe it or not, I actually get more compliments and turned heads in this thing than I did in the Charger Hellcat I had about six months ago. It is just a head turner, especially in my area uh, where, you know, it's just pretty much country. Um, so people love this thing. Do you have metal bumpers, metal skid plates underneath here? You got 18 inch wheels with this aggressive Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tire. Very grippy, very off-road oriented, very nice. This has the four corner air suspension with the off-road shocks as well. This whole truck can be, can be raised like probably like two inches higher than it is and can be slammed all the way on the ground for easy entry and exit. It is a very tall truck. I have some people ask me if this was like a three-quarter ton because it's so tall. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a power wagon too as well. Um, but anyways, you get the point. This thing looks very good. Price as tested on this is $83,000. Somebody, whoever specced this one out, just went on Dodge's website and Leroy Jenkins the options. It has every available option you can think of on it. Um, I'll get to that when we go look at the window sticker on the inside. But you do have these awesome RAM boxes here that are very convenient to put stuff in. Um, you do have a 400 watt outlet over here that you can power some tools. I love these RAM boxes. I think they're a great way to, you know, use the bed space. Um, it does make reaching into the bed a little bit hard, but I love those. This does have the multifunction rear tailgate as well. It has that crease on the side there. You know, I, I don't particularly care for the looks of it, but for functionality, I think it's great, honestly. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people kind of share that same uh, opinion that I have that it kind of looks ugly, but once you get up to it and actually use it, it is very user friendly and you can just slide stuff in without reaching over the tailgate, which is nice. This does have the bed lighting as well, as well as the tonneau cover. Um, like I said, this is fully optioned out. So this is factory Mopar accessories. Uh, this is the factory spray and bed liner. Um, this is just an awesome, awesome thing. You do get a step down here that you can just pull down with your hand and jump up into the bed, which is convenient. Can go ahead and close this tailgate. It is dampened as well. It can also open this way. I had a 2019 Ram 1500 that I just got rid of probably about, what is that, about four or five months ago now. Um, you can find that review on the channel. And, you know, I, I love this truck. I love Rams in general. I think they're the best truck you can buy on the road today. And uh, this is no exception. This is also metal as well, metal bumpers, which is super nice, super durable. This does have a class four hitch on it, meaning it can tow over 10,000 pounds, which is super nice. Does have the tow package as well, which adds these towing mirrors that can just be flipped up like that. Everybody knows the stereotypical Dodge owner uh, mirror there, but keeping them down is nice. I mean. From, I don't tow at all. If I were to buy this truck, I wouldn't get these because this mirror here on the passenger side is super zoomed in so you can see um, the trailer. But um, they are nice to have if you tow. It does have an optional like sport hood as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that window sticker real quick and see all the options. So like I said, as tested, this is $83,000. The optional equipment here, you get a technology group, comfort and convenience group, trailer tow group, advanced safety group, bed utility group, the night edition package, the Rebel Level 2 equipment group, 
I mean, you can pause the video now if you want to see all these options. It is literally insane. The base price of this is $59,300, but like I said, as tested price, $83,735. Absolutely insane. It's a lot of money, but it's a lot of truck too. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. So under the hood is a 5.7 liter Hemi V8 making 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to an eight-speed torque flight transmission, and this is the e-torque model. It's a mild hybrid system. Works pretty well. Um, this truck is not fuel efficient at all. Uh, I've been getting about 13 miles a gallon. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, when you buy this thing, that's uh, what you're going to expect with these giant tires and it lifted up uh, pretty high. Uh, it's not really very efficient at all, but, you know, it does have e-torque. So there you go. So back here do get a lot of space. This is the crew cab model, and like the Ram that I had, you do get toolboxes in the floor, which is super convenient. These are factory floor mats too, and I like these a lot better than the Husky liners I had in my personal Ram 1500. Very nice. This folds up as well to reveal a ton of storage under here that you can place like, you know, ratchet straps, a fire extinguisher or something, and it has this here to prevent stuff from sliding all over, which I wish my truck had. Pretty flat load floor here too. You can put a bunch of tools back here um, and there's plenty of room for passengers back here as well. Back here is a super nice place to be. It is huge. I mean, I got over a foot of leg room, a couple map pockets here, you get rear heated seats in this model. I think the rear heated seats come with that level two equipment group. Plenty of connections, the USB-A ports, USB-C ports, 400 watt outlet back here as well. Some vents, cup holders. Pull down center armrest with some cup holders here as well. Just a very, very nice place to be back here. I love it. These seats are super comfortable, leather seats all around and really no complaints there at all. Plenty of door storage as well. You get power seats with Rebel kind of embroidered into the seat as well. These are super comfortable, heated for the passenger and driver and they are memory as well smart key access as well just press this button here to lock and then after waiting a few seconds you just put your hand behind the door there's a touch sensor behind the door that will open it do get push button start as well big old rebel on the massive digital gauge cluster as well uh, super nice i really like that gauge cluster uh, I, I, I miss my analog gauge cluster, but this one's pretty nice. I mean, you can change it to an analog gauge cluster as well, but I still like the physical gauges. Over here on the left, you do get adjustable pedals, your parking brake, your standard, uh, you know, fog light and puddle lamp controls and automatic headlights. Um, over here, you can control the gauge cluster. There's tons of screens you can customize in here. Um, you can even put the built-in navigation uh, that this truck has in the infotainment up here too, which is super nice. Got some off-road screens, um, you name it, it's got it. Um, you get the point, very customizable. Over here you do get your adaptive cruise control or regular cruise control controls. Gear limit switch, you know, you can control the gears if you're towing. Down here you get your selector with your four-wheel drive controls, auto stop start, and this does have an electronic locking rear axle. And speaking of rear axle, this does have a 392 rear end, which is great for towing and great for acceleration. This thing is very quick. We'll demonstrate that uh, when we go out on the road. Here you do get a massive 12 inch infotainment that is portrait laid out. I like this one because it's not like a tablet. You know, it's not like a designated tablet. Um, it's built into the dash and I think it looks very good um, for you know, this type of infotainment. Um, I like it. For some reason, I can't get Apple CarPlay to work, but I believe it's attributed to the cord that I'm using. I think it's worn out. I had trouble with other cars um, with this cord, and, and even in my personal cars. Um, so I won't be able to do a stereo demonstration today or show you Apple CarPlay, unfortunately, because Apple's cords are garbage. Anyway, you do get a reverse camera in this infotainment as well with a bunch of different views. I mean, you, you name it. It has it. Forward camera, rear camera, um, nice 360 cam uh, when you back this thing up because it is a behemoth to back up. It's a pain in the rear to park. Anyways, I do like this infotainment. It's a little bit on the leggier side, um, but it's not too terribly bad. Um, when the Apple CarPlay did work briefly, um, I enjoyed it. Let's see, will it work now? 
no, it won't. Um, I enjoyed it, and this has a 19-speaker Harman Kardon stereo system. Um, pretty good. I give it like a you know high C tier, low B tier um, rating on that. Um, it's pretty darn good. Um, down here, you do get your integrated trailer brake controls and your trailer steering. This has a like trailer steering assist. If you don't know how to back up a trailer, it will basically do this for you. Um, it'll turn the steering wheel and back the trailer up for you, which is nice. Um, here you can adjust your adaptive air suspension. Like I said earlier, you can lower this thing significantly. You can raise this thing significantly. Um, it's actually pretty comical just how much range there is. Let's go ahead and put it all the way up into off-road. Um, off-road mode, you can only drive, I think, up to 25, 30 miles an hour, um, and then it won't allow you to drive that high because it's super tall. I'll go ahead and get out when it's completely done um, to show you just how tall this thing gets. It's ridiculous. You get tow haul mode, your parking sensors, the ability to turn them off, traction control off. Down here, you get a wireless charger and a place to put your phone. A 400 watt outlet down here, a couple cup holders, you know, uh, some storage here with some change holders down there. It's a giant cavern um, to get a giant like filing cabinet size um, storage compartment here, as well as a split tiered storage center console with a USB port there as well. You get a glove box up there and a glove box down here. I mean, guys, Ram just nailed the amount of storage in this usable space. I love Ram trucks for that. Up here, you get a little bit of storage with a 12 volt outlet. You got a rear view mirror with home link, and this flips up to reveal a digital mirror, which is nice. Um, I like to have a regular mirror. Um, digital mirror is actually really nice. It's very high quality and it's high refresh rate as well. Um, doesn't get dirty, but I just like a traditional rear view mirror. Sunglasses holder. Um, you do get a power sliding rear window. Um, actually, it doesn't have home link in the mirror there. It has home link up here. This is just to control the mirror, uh, the angle and stuff like that. You do get a visor that's illuminated. Um, it has a mirror as well. Overall, I really like the quality of the interior here. Everything is super high quality, um, just like my 2019 Ram that I had. Nothing's really too much changed on it. There's no rattles, no squeaks. There wasn't any on my 19 Ram either. Uh, the materials in here do hold up pretty well. Um, I know that from experience. And it's just a super nice place to be. Um, it does honestly feel um, $83,000 in here. Very premium, um, very nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this thing looks like in off-road suspension mode. Let's see how jacked up it is. Leave the keys in here so it doesn't honk at me. Yeah, look at this, guys. It is huge now. There's a ton of ground clearance. Like, I mean, look at that. It's like a foot of ground clearance under there, you know, and it's backed all with skid plating underneath so you can really take your $83,000 truck off-road um, if you want to. I'll be completely honest, if I spent $83,000 on this, I definitely would not take it off-road. Um, and probably the majority of the owners probably wouldn't either. Um, it's probably just going to stay, you know, as a mall crawler or whatever. Let's lower it all the way down. I want to show you guys what it looks like when it's completely lowered. It, I mean, it literally slams all the way down to the ground. Um, it's pretty quite comical. Um, the air suspension is really nice, um, especially when you're traveling on the highway. Um, if you're above, like, I think 60 or 70 miles an hour for an extended period of time, the front will kind of, like, nosedive like this, and it'll say aerodynamic ride height achieved in the gauge cluster. So it's getting a little bit better fuel economy. Uh, like I said, I've been getting 13 miles a gallon in this thing um, for the past... 299 miles and it's just not that fuel efficient at all but hey at least it tries uh, now that the thing's slammed let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like now super easy to jump out at look at this i mean look guys it's literally on the ground now it's quite comical um i think that's that's a cool feature not sure how it will hold up in the long term as far as reliability goes but uh you have that avail availability to you. Um, you can also lower this as well on the key fob, which is pretty nice. Um, you can plan ahead if you have, you know, an, an older person or you know somebody who can't get up in the car very easily. You can at least lower it from the key fob as well. Forgot to mention this does take 89 mid grade. Um, you can run 87 in this, uh, but Ram recommends that you run 89. Um, so you're going to be spending 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars depending on where you're at uh, to fill this thing up and it's a thirsty boy. What else is there to say? I mean, there is a ton of options, guys. Um, I could spend probably 40 minutes um, just going over all the options on this, 
but I don't want to bore you that much. I think we should get into how this thing drives. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin. Beautiful day here in Northeast Ohio. It's been a pain to try to get videos filmed the past couple weeks. Every single time I try to go do a video. It's either windy, super snowy, or raining. Um, all which are not great times to film in. Um, it makes for a very poor video. So today, I'm pretty thankful um, that we have good weather. I haven't been uploading very much due to that, but now that the springtime's here, I'm fully expecting to be uploading at least every other week at, at a minimum, which is super nice. I love the way Rams drive, um, especially with this air suspension. It is super smooth um, for a truck. I, I mean, it's not, you know, like luxury level smooth, but I mean, for a truck like this, um, it's nice to not get beat to death. The aggressive tire pattern uh, that these Goodyears have um, do, uh, I guess, amplify the amount of road noise that comes in here, but it's not too terribly bad. I actually think this is quieter than my 2024 Civic. Ram did a pretty good job of keeping NVH uh, to a minimum in here. Flip up the digital mirror so you guys can get a look at that, of what that's like while you're driving. It does have blind spot monitoring in the mirrors too. These mirrors are defrostable as well, which is nice if you live in a northern climate like me. The 8-speed transmission and rams are excellent. It's ready to kick down at any moment. No legs, super smooth shifting. Um, really no complaints at all. Just like my 19 Ram, um, this is pretty much the same thing as far as the powertrain goes. Um, the exhaust on this truck sounds a lot more aggressive than my 19 Ram. Um, and I really wish my 19 Ram had this exhaust. Um, it's quiet in here, but on the outside it's completely different than what mine was. It's a lot more louder, a lot more aggressive, uh, but it's still not like over the top uh, loud, like, uh, you know, like cutting the exhaust off and sticking some glass packs on or something like that. It's the, it's perfect. I really wish my truck had this exhaust. Apparently this person does not know how to get hit the gas pedal. Oh, there, now she hits the gas pedal. There we go. Hits it at the end of the drive, or at the end of the uh, entrance ramp. You know, if you're not going to drive the speed limit, get out of the left lane. You know, I, I, I think... There we go. I think it's a common thing, like, as soon as you buy a Ram, you know the stereotype of, like, Ram drivers just being on uh, people's tails all the time. Um, I think it's a thing that as soon as you buy a Ram, literally everybody around you just drives super slow. Uh, it's honestly ridiculous. Like, you know, I daily drive a Honda Civic now, and I don't run into that at all. But as soon as I got this truck this week from uh, Stellantis to review, Literally everybody drives 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. It's gotta be a Ram thing. But anyways, um, now that you can see that we are cruising on the highway, the air suspension uh, went into an aerodynamic mode. The truck's kind of like this, getting trying to get better fuel economy. Um, but that's a pretty cool feature. You do have a choice to either enable adaptive cruise here or regular cruise control by just clicking this and set which is super nice that you have the uh, choice to do both of them. Um, I find that super convenient. Sometimes adaptive cruise control can get annoying. Um, this adaptive cruise control system is interesting. I think the following distance on the closest is way too close. You're literally like tailgating the person in front of you. So I keep it on the third setting, uh, which is about two seconds behind the car in front of me, uh, based on my calculations. 
Um, <laughs> it does get a little close. But as you can hear, the road noise is okay. It's a little loud because the tires um, still quieter than my Civic, like I said earlier. Um, but you do have a lot of tire noise. You do have some wind noise from being up this high. Um, but, I mean, overall, it's a nice cruiser. Uh, my wife and I took an hour trip yesterday um, to go uh, shopping at a mall. And, uh, you know, she was comfortable over here and really no complaints at all. We enjoyed this Harman Kardon stereo system pretty well. Then when you come to a complete stop, the air suspension will go to a normal ride height. See, normal ride height achieved. It's pretty quick. Sometimes, I will say this, sometimes I do miss being on a truck, being in a truck, because uh, you can see above like places like that over the top of a guardrail. When I take that turn in my car, it's kind of sketchy because you can't really see cars um, coming up over the hill there. So riding a little higher is kind of nice, but I still like my little car. It's a new State Highway Patrol Durango there. It looks pretty sharp. Uh, the auto start stop system is a little jerky. Um, I don't particularly care for it too much because it like shuts off, it cuts off the engine before you get to a stop. So it kind of seems like the truck stalls out, uh, which is interesting. Not sure if I really like that. Um, I tend to kind of just turn it off unless I'm planning to be in a area where I'm just going to be sitting for a while. So I want to save some fuel, not idling all the time. Driver ergonomics in here are very nice. Um, I really enjoyed it in my truck. Um, I didn't even realize it, but you know, just having my hand up on the window here and having a hold on the steering wheel is nice. You know, I can put my elbow here, have one hand here, and uh, it's just overall just a really nice place to be. I don't have to lean forward to, you know, touch the screen here or adjust my climate controls. Everything's just laid out perfectly. Um, you know, I can even hold the steering wheel down here if I wanted to. I just love these trucks so much. I really wish there was a place around here I could take this off-road and really demonstrate um, how good this does off-road. But like I said, it's an $83,000 truck. If this is my personal truck, there is no way in heck I'm going to take this thing off-road. So a quick 0 to 60. No complete stop here. And floor it. Wow. Uh, so the e-torque system, I believe, provides uh, like 115 pound-feet of torque um, extra off the line. And that, combined with a 392 rear end, that makes a big difference. That is way faster than my 2019 Ram was. I think I had 327s in my Ram. Um, that is, that's a night and day difference. Uh, it just wakes itself up off the line quickly. This V8 sounds good. Uh, this is the last of the V8s, unfortunately. Um, they're going to be putting the Hurricane in line six, which I'm actually anxiously awaiting for. Um, but I'm going to miss that V8 sound, definitely. I drove a Wagoneer probably about a year ago now uh, with the Hurricane in line six. I was really impressed with it. I, I actually like that engine a lot. Um, so I can't wait. Um, to see what it's like in a Ram. Um, I think definitely had a ton of torque and uh, it sounded pretty decent too. It doesn't sound, na it didn't sound nasally or disgusting, uh, kind of like Ford's EcoBoost. I, I'm not a big fan of that um, V6 at all. Uh, I just don't like the sound of it. But I think this Hurricane that's going to go in this thing eventually is going to do pretty darn well. This does have uh, MDS as well to try to conserve fuel. Um, you know, this cylinder deactivation, they call it MDS, multi-displacement, I don't know, something like that. Um, I don't particularly care for it. It makes the truck sound like crap. It makes it vibrate a little bit uh, more. Um, you can definitely feel the engine vibrations a lot more. Um, and it uh, just doesn't really get 
that much better of fuel economy. I just think it just overcomplicates the drivetrain um, and kind of leads to uneven drivetrain um, wear. They claim it doesn't, but I, I'm, I'm not believing it based on some mechanic stuff on you know Reddit and some of the forums and stuff. Um, but you do have the ability to disable it in here. You just have to do it every single time you get into the car. You have to just mess with this gear limit switch and make sure you're in eighth gear um, and then MDS will be um, disabled. Or you could get a tune and void your warranty, but it's just easier to press the buttons. Well, you know what? Let's go straight. Let's get. Let's do a little bit more driving. I love how this thing just soaks up bumps. Um, I, it's a little bit different than my 19 Ram that I had too. Uh, my 19 Ram, I, I got bounced around pretty good. Man, this thing sounds great. I'd love to get my hands on a TRX someday. Just experience what this thing would be like with, well, let's see, three, four, five, like three or four hundred extra horses. Whew, that'd be insane. This is pretty quick, um, you know, compared to like a Ford or a Chevrolet or something. It might be a little slower, uh, but you know, it's quick enough. You're not, you're not buying this thing for drag racing. Final impressions on the 2024 Ram Rebel with the Hemi. A very, very nice truck. Is it worth $83,000? I'll let you guys battle that out in the comments. I don't know. That's a lot of money. But this is also a lot of truck. So, I don't know. Let me let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, I loved it. I like this truck. Um, like I said, I mean, I love the Ram trucks a lot. But for my lifestyle, I just didn't make sense for me. So that's why I got rid of mine. But, shout out to Dodge for letting me borrow this for a week and review it. It's been an absolute pleasure. I loved this truck so much. All right, guys, that will do it on the 2024 Ram Rebel. If you guys like the video, please consider giving it a like as it pushes the video out to other people so other people can see it. It helps favor the algorithm a little bit more. If you liked it even more than that, please consider subscribing. I try to do this every other week, um, if possible, every week if I have uh, the press cars and other cars available to me. Um, follow me on Instagram as well, at Paul's Place YT for some additional content behind the scenes. Uh, I try to be a little active on there to try to keep you guys updated. But... Guys, what a treat this has been this week. Such a cool looking truck. Wow. All right, guys. Take care.